The FAA gives SpaceX Starlink the stamp of approval. Now what? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink day. Really great news came out over the weekend and I wanna share it with you. It has to do with the FAA giving Elon the stamp of approval for more SpaceX Starship launches. Why is this so important? I'm glad you asked. Well, once Starship is online, so to speak, and it can actually release those version three satellites into low Earth orbit or LEO, that's gonna make our service, our SpaceX Starlink service, much better. About 10 times the capacity is what these units have. They're about four times the weight and size, but 10 times the capacity. So in certain regions where there's currently a waiting list, there won't be a waiting list. Other places where we're seeing slower speeds for congestion or other reasons, there will not be that congestion. Once again, every one of these version three satellites are the equivalent to 10 of the version 2.0 minis. And this stamp of approval, so to speak, is a really big deal because of it. So I wanna go through an article, read this to you, give you my commentary, and then of course I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about all of this? Is this exciting? Is this going to affect you? I think if you are a Starlink user as of today, it will affect you in the not so distant future actually. So anyways, before we get into this article, I wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. If you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, they're free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, share, share the content. I would really appreciate that. Sharing is caring. <laughs> share with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Share the channel, share the content, share the video, whatever. Any type of share is definitely helpful. Also, if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I put together a playlist just for you. I'll put a link of, don't click on it yet. I put a link over here. There's about 375 videos I think I've created for you about SpaceX Starlink, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it is this channel has always been about the why and it will continue to be about the why. And finally, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, I would appreciate that. You can click on this button down here. YouTube gave it to us, thank you, YouTube. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So let's jump right into this article. And then once again, I'll give you my commentary. And finally, I wanna hear from you down below. And if you're shy, I get it, that's fine. Put an emoji down here, any type of emoji. A banana, that'd be fine. SpaceX Starship may soon launch more frequently from Texas. SpaceX is inching closer to ramping up its Starship launches from Boca Chica, Texas, after a key update from the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA. On November 20th, the FAA released a revised draft environmental review, examining SpaceX's proposal to increase Starship and Super Heavy launches to 25 per year along with booster and upper stage landings. Currently, the site is limited to just five Starship launches annually. That is a major increase, major. What delayed the review? The updated draft kicks off a public comment period running through January 17th with five public meetings scheduled, four in Texas in early January and one online January 13th. Back in August, the FAA postponed public hearings on an early draft after raising concerns over SpaceX's water deluge system at the launch pad, potentially violating the Clean Water Act. The agency wanted more clarity on SpaceX's environmental practices before proceeding. Complete and utter bullshit. It continues. Now the FAA says the revised draft aligns with the 2022 programmatic environmental assessment, showing no major environmental risk to expanding operations. No kidding. 
considering Elon Musk's SpaceX showed that the water deluge system uses drinking water. Drinking water. However, the final decision will only come after public comments are reviewed, a timeline the FAA hasn't yet shared. Interesting. Starship's latest launch drama. On November 19th, SpaceX completed its fourth Starship launch of the year, but hit a snag during the booster landing attempt. The Super Heavy booster was supposed to be caught by the launch tower at Boca Chica. The salad tongs, or the chopsticks, or as they call it, Mechazilla. But unexpected communication glitch aborted the catch attempt. SpaceX revealed that the health check on the launch tower's critical system triggered the abort, choosing safety over risk. Elon Musk later clarified on social media saying, quote, lost comms or communications to the launch tower computer. Catch would probably have still worked, but we weren't sure, so erred on the side of caution. What's next? SpaceX is pushing hard to increase Starship launch cadence, which is critical for its ambitious plans like Mars colonization and next generation satellite deployments. With the FAA's review showing no major hurdles, a decision could pave the way for SpaceX to launch Starship at an unprecedented rate. Yes, 25 per year. That's like two a month, over two a month. That is nuts compared to five per year currently. That is a major increase. Will this push SpaceX closer to dominating the space industry? It already dominates it. Or stir up fresh controversies? The next few months will be pivotal for the Starship program and the public's voice could play a big role in shaping its future. Many experts suggest that the Trump administration would foster a more favorable regulatory environment for projects like SpaceX's, aligning with Trump's known emphasis on ambitious space exploration goals, including Mars missions. Very interesting. And that is absolutely factual. The reason being is I've talked about this a lot in lives, my JC Live show. If you don't see those JC Live shows, be a part of them on Friday. We call it Free Speech Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join me. Sometimes my wife is next to me, so you don't have to see this ugly mug all the time. So anyways, JC Live, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I've talked about this in the past, many times in the past. And the way the FAA works and FCC and Fish and Wildlife and all the rest of these three-letter regulatory bodies have been giving Elon Musk and SpaceX our time over the years. The way they work is perfect examples with the FAA. There's five commissioners and it's mandated that three of the commissioners be let's say Republican, if there's a Republican in office, or Democrat, if there's a Democrat in office. So in the last four years, there's been Democrat because President Biden was in there. So there was three Democrats and two Republicans. That's just how it works. The system is broken. We can go through an entire video explaining why that is broken. I think it's a bunch of BS, but that's the way it works. Now we're going to have a Republican in office. So what will it be? It will be three Republicans and two Democrats. Why does it matter? I'm glad you asked. The reason is, is the majority of time, the FAA, FCC, Fish and Wild, all the rest, they vote based on political bias. So if there is something that's coming, maybe there's, there's a contract or there's some kind of something in question and the five commissioners need to vote. Well, now there'll be three Republicans and two Democrats. What does that mean? The Republicans have the majority. They're going to take it. And that's the way it's going to go. All right. Whereas in the past four years, it was three Democrats and two Republicans. So how would the vote go? Of course, the way the Democrats want it to go. So this is how it works. It is broken. The FAA, the FCC, they should be working for us, not political parties, in my personal opinion. But that's the way it works. So now that Trump is going to be in there, the five commissioners will be three Republican and two Democrats. And we know that the administration is going to prioritize has prioritized in the past when he was in there technological advancements and private sector innovations and space and all this kind of stuff. He's the one that started the whole space for it's very, very important to him. All right. And his administration to get us to the moon and to Mars. Very similar to JF Kennedy. 
So I think that this is really interesting. I wanna know what you think, because if this does happen, all right, forget about Mars, forget about the moon. Let's think about us. SpaceX Starlink is going to get better. How much better? Like I said at the very beginning, 10 times better, right? Because these version three satellites literally have 10 times the capacity, they're four times the size, and they're going to be lower in LEO, meaning that they're going to be closer to Earth. You're gonna have faster speeds, lower latency. It's just going to be better, 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 better. So the sooner that they can get that Pez dispenser to open up and launch out those version three satellites in LEO, the better it'll be for us. So anyways, down below, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this? Is it exciting? It's exciting to me. What do you think? If you don't wanna put anything down there, like I said before, put an emoji, put a poop emoji. I don't care, whatever it is, it will make me happy. Finally, if you have not subscribed yet, consider doing so. Also, throw the video a thumbs up, don't forget to share and Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years, and my merch, my shirts, my tees, my books, and everything else. Go over to jchristina.com, see if there's something there that you like, and if there is, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you on Mars. Take care.